you get a solution to all the problems. There is no such issue of not knowing, you know. So, but you have to hit the right path. That's all. So, now here is a subject, you know, enhanced on recovery, which is, is very notorious. You know, in universities, not a lot of interest is given in UR because very few people understand UR. And in the industry, equally nobody understands. So now imagine people always talk that let's do you or let's do you or you know our production, oil production is going down. But nobody will come forward to do that. But this is the issue. Why? You will, as this story unfolds, you will come to know why the people take the back seat, not the front seat in saying they always blame the UR process, saying it's good for nothing. It's a very archaic, archaic mix, good for nothing, and it's very expensive. It, it involves a lot of manpower, a lot of capital investments, and internal rate of return, you understand, IRR, economics, so that's very low. So returns are very low. So people avoid it. The management avoid it. The oil companies avoid it. Always they want to drill wells and produce, but you know, an oil field, I will show you, after a particular maturity, drilling a well will not help you. At that time, push is required. I will talk in very simple language, huh? the push. And the wells, when you drill a well, it gives a pull. It tries to pull the oil, defying the forces, the capillary forces, the viscous forces, the gravity forces, it tries to pull. But a time will come in the reservoir when this, this pull doesn't allow the oil to move. Otherwise, you require some push from an external substance to defy those forces and push the oil into the well. It just say, I cannot displace you unless I push you out. It's like analog, you know. So, similar is the oil there. So, let's see how things happen in the UR. So this is a talk which I am giving to almost all the agencies, whether it is FIP or PDPU or external of the country or internal. First, you know, first because this is a series of talk in the coming two days. So first is what is UR, very clear understanding why we do UR, what is the need of doing UR, when we should do UR, how to do UR. These are some of the basic questions, no? You have to understand. Then we can move into the Real UR from the post plant, like combustion, then steam tomorrow, then ASP, chemical, miscible. I don't expect you to understand each and everything in detail, no. But try to understand at least 10%. I think that will give you a lot of value as a petroleum engineer. So here we go ahead. What is UR? The types of UR today, the classical URs which we do often and what is hybrid UR? Hybrid UR means which we try to put in conjunction with two UR's combined together. Okay, so that's way. And then we have where are we in the UR? Is <coughs> compared to the world, where do we stand? Where the country stands today? Understand? So you should be. You would like to know that you know. You always talk of US is doing this. The the South America is doing this, the Europe is doing, but what we, where we are, some people are not aware of it, that we don't do anything you are, but yes, you will see we do substantial you are. What are the challenges? Obviously to do you are, there are sort of challenges, you know, negative mindset people, you know, some people are so negative mindset, they will say, no, no, no need of doing you are, you know, we better live with the normal way. Why to squeeze the reservoir and like a kapre, you know, you are trying to drain out the water, it's like that. So, it requires several challenges, not to squeeze the water. In the mix, in the uh, washing machine, you, this does, you know, defy all the forces, water is squeezed out. So, some, some possibly technology can do that here in the reservoir. And what are the enablers? What are the factors which can tell us that we can go for more of your processes? And then we have a summary. Okay. <laughs> If you read in the books, if you read in the books, you know, 
have you have you ever read what is your in the book all no so it's a classically defined like this no so after primary recovery when a field is discovered oil field is discovered so the primary energy itself allow the oil what is that force which are like let, let this session be very interactive you know it will be very interesting i'm telling you so if i ask question respond it doesn't matter how good the answer is or how bad but you know you will suddenly appreciate yourself the things are happening for you so you know in the primary recovery what are the forces which pushes the oil into the wells it is the energy in the oil energy in the oil as well as the what do you call that compressibility factor no as pressure declines it expands no? these two factors but uh, the gas in the oil is the primary source of energy which is pushing the oil into the wells so as with time if if you if you are not a good doctor if you do not maintain the health of your patient properly then the energy level of the reservoir will go down so what does a doctor do it injects energy into that so it is mandatory on a reservoir engineer's part to check the health of the reservoir time to time if you see the if the gas is getting liberated out from the reservoir gas liberates out at what point what do you call that point bubble, bubble point so if you allow the pressure to go substantially low below the bubble point it, you are depleting the energy so it's a very dangerous thing to happen in a reservoir so after the primary recovery you start with the water flooding and pressure maintenance this is water flooding and this is pressure maintenance can you perceive the difference between water injection and water flooding see these are the questions sometimes i might be asking you in the interview boards you know i am in several interview boards you know this type of questions are being asked during your what do you call it? your final year employment interviews or something so please listen to me very carefully you know maybe you get lot of hint while i speak to you so a time comes in the reservoir from the primary that you require to maintain the health by injecting water normally any oil field. so we call it secondary recovery but here is a item called pressure maintenance you know, sometimes we call it water injection as you go to the fields of assam here in nazira sipsagar or in duliajan everywhere you will see water injection has been resorted not from the first day of the life of the field but from after a particular time when the pressure is reaching the bubble point perfect so that time injection of water is used now tell me friends what is the difference between water flooding and water injection Huh? Yes, yes. Very good answer. Water injection. Yes, yes. And water flooding is done in the in the oil lake. In the oil lake. Another major another major reservoir engineering decision is that prior to substantial depletion of reservoir pressure, injection of water when it is resorted to is called water injection. so as you said maintaining the pressure so it happens near to the bubble point and what is water flooding with substantial depletion of reservoir pressure when water injection is resorted to into the oil lake it is called water flooding so two advantages of water flooding is maintaining the pressure as well as pushing the oil out i mean i am talking in a very layman's language i don't want to involve you in very complicated languages but you can correlate immediately with sweeps you know sweeping the oil out from the contacted area of the water in the pores in the reservoir but you know the book also says that you know after that secondary recovery is a producing the third crop of oil third crop they say in in our fields in the in the agriculture first crop second crop and third crop in the same field something like that when we attempt to do it is called tertiary recovery is called enhanced oil recovery 
You know, this book, if you open any book of anyone, you will find this sort of definition. But my experience suggests that possibly this is a bookish definition, but this process can go right into the primary stage. Means a thermal gas injection of chemical can walk into primary stage. So there is no hard and fast, you know. It all depends on your wisdom, on your company's economic power, the willingness to take a risk, the willingness to invest, and it's and it's knowledgeable manpower, whether it can tackle a technology or not. So I will come across cases where you will see the thermal methods have been deployed in the primary stage. When the field was discovered and wells were getting drilled to start production, then only thermal methods were deployed. Miscible gas injection at the same time only. And now, are you keeping track of Kane? Kane, Rajasthan Kane projects, Mangla is a, almost a primary polymer flood going on. After three years of production starting, polymer flood has started. Now what they are, I will tell you in the coming days. Okay. So what is that? You see, the book also says conventional recovery. Conventional recovery means these are conventional recovery. Eh? So it targets mobile oil in the reservoir and you are targets immobile oil, which cannot be produced due to capillary and viscous forces. This may be question mark. Eh? This definition also brings about the jury is out. Whether it is true or not, it may not be true. If I am deploying a process right in the primary stage, means it's all mobile oil. Mo oil is mobile in that. Oh, capillary vessels for something I need. Ne? It has not yet come. But, so I wanted to warn you actually. You read. You understand. But with days, with coming days and with the implementation of new technology, new thinking, Things are changing fast. So accept the change. Oh, thinking like a much early. Now, if you enter a company and your chairman of the company asks you, gentlemen, you are a reservoir engineer, the what will you like to do? So you your perception should be like that. You know, not that ke, I will grow primary, secondary. It all depends the company's power, the strength of the company, you know. If the company is willing to take the risk, go for a change. Okay. So, what is UR? It is the complex technology processes, why capital loaded, resource is intensive and a long lead time. First you think of it, you will laboratory test, simulation, then you go for pilot testing, then you go for field implementation. What are the benefits? As I told you, it re-energizes the reservoir rejuvenates the reservoir, injects life into the reservoir. Ek marich mein, I'll talk in between in Hindi too. Please appreciate. If we oh, inject, karte, it injects life into a dead reservoir. I'll show you how dead a reservoir can be. And they come into life. So that is the strength of UR. And it enhances the production as well as this is the key, increases the Recovery, yield, you know, and the cascading effect in increasing the economic life. Today, everybody talks of economic life, you know, and it's very important. Everything you should do is related to economics. You cannot talk that technically I will increase recovery. No. Technically and economically, to what extent you can increase the recovery? That is called as reserves. Are, are you clear with the definition of reserves and resources? Reserves is jo techno economically which can be commercially exploitable. Technically there is no nothing, this is no, no company will allow technically. It has to merge it with the ongoing economics, ongoing oil price, ongoing operating expenditure. Okay, so this is what it is. When to think of you are uh, that's a very valid question, you know, people ask, when should we do UR? Should we do it today? Or we should have done it 15 years back? Or we should do it 20 years hence? 
When should we do a few words? You know, Churchill once said that the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. But if you have not done it, the second best time is doing it now. So similar is for UR. The best time is to do the UR when a field is discovered and starts its exploitation as quick as possible, right in the beginning. So it's a big leap time, no? So you have to put it back. But if you have not done, then we should do it as quickly as possible. Okay. See, this is the most important. Why now? Because the design and implementation of your project takes time. It's not a drilling a well. Is not discovering and it takes a lot of a time. Then, and if it is a tertiary project, tertiary means if it's a, like I will tell you some cases where after a field is totally matured, we are thinking of UR. I will show you a case. So it takes how many years? 30, 40 years. So it's a long time, you know. So we should, but as a petroleum engineer, you should from the very first day and should understand what sort of UR process is applicable in that field. That is possible. But doing it 20 years after is possible. But you should know your well should be designed that way. Your infrastructure should be designed that way. Understand me? Because after 30 years, you should tell me, oh my God, the wells are drilled in a different way. How can I do this UR? It is happening. I'm telling you it is happening. It's no joke. It's happening. But as a petroleum engineer, you need to be careful about this. So you see the extent. You see the you see how long it takes huh? effort and investment and uncertainty and risk. As with time, the uncertainty and risk is going down, you see. With if more efforts and investment. You see now, you develop the idea, oh my god, I'll do this uh, steam injection in one of our things here. You know, that's an idea. But to bring that idea to field development, it takes a lot of effort and investment. So you have, you have to screen the UR method, you have to test it in laboratory, you have to model it, simulation model, then design the field testing, carry out the pilot, then results you have to evaluate. If it is not successful, you go back, scratch your head and get another idea going. So this way it's a hell lot of time, hell lot of time. So appreciate this, that it takes hell lot of time and you have to think as quickly as possible.